Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Meet Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is October 1st, and are you ready for the October surprise? I hope everybody's staying safe out there. We've got an action packed show for you today. Michael's out running around with clients. Today, let's say oil, natural gas, coal dominates U.S. rail freight. Pretty interesting with the timely uh, po- almost shore, offshore. Uh, strike uk has highest industrial electrical costs next up salt water is making electric cars blow up after hurricane helene this is a tragic story all across the united states and it is very very sad russia expects oil price volatility to subside china oil demand concerns aren't going away so With that, let's go ahead and get rolling over here to this first story. The first story is oil and natural gas, coal dominates U.S. rail freight. Mr. Producer, if you could bring up the Greenbrier companies ranked what's most moved by rail in 2023, 708 metric tons moved of coal and natural gas Second, and followed by that, is natural gas. I mean, agricultural project projects. And then after that is construction materials. Unbelievable how much energy is absolutely moved by our rail systems. Unbelievable. And why it matters? Rail is critical in supporting all the industries. And this, I do not know how this potential strike is going to happen. How this is going to be impacted is coal going to be coming in on ship is what is going to happen during this whole potential strike for the next 10 days. And I'm going to put money on it that it does happen for financial reasons. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. Rail contributes 1.8% of U.S. transport greenhouse gases, moving over 40% of all long-distance freight. Rail can do this as highly as fuel, fuel efficient. But I'll tell you what would even be better is if we could use pipelines and get rid of the natural gas going on absolutely on the rail cars instead of LNG. So anyway, just a food for thought there. Let's go to the UK. UK has world highest industrial electrical cost. You know what? This is really, really sad. And as you get ready to go vote, understand that Germany went out and was showing everybody the Green New Deal way to do things. They have fallen on their face and the Green New Deal equals deindustrialization. They are having some real problems. Governor Newsom has then gone, oh, yay, I want to do this. He's now having some, he's, California is all moving to Texas. I wish you'd leave your voter thing there. But Spain offers electricity at 13 point. 31 cents per kilowatt hour, Finland as 6.75 cents per kilowatt, and Sweden charges 7.6%. The new government data shows that Germany charges 15.64% kilowatt, but the UK is rolling in at 25.46 kilowatt per hour in 2023. Bad energy policies equals deindustrialization. Vote for Green New Deal. You get a wealth transfer in a poor country. So hats off to them for, you know, really not understanding energy. Let's go to the next story here. Salt water is making electric cars blow up after Hurricane Helene. First, our prayers are going out to all the families affected all through the the South, the United States through this. This is a sad, sad story. And it's even more sad. The response by the Harris-Biden administration is abysmal and missing in action. Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, and Virginia have all declared emergencies. Nearly 100 people are believed to have died and millions affected. I think that number may be going up from there. Uh, North Carolina was the state most affected by the storm where 25 people were killed. Highest death toll in the state since Hurricane Hugo in 1989. But when you take a look at water, 
And those batteries and EVs, those are a fire hazard waiting to happen. So uh, be be very careful. Our prayers go out and a hat tip to President Trump for going out, bringing supplies and his boots on the ground, checking things out. I believe uh, his comment today when he was with Franklin Graham was pretty funny. And he said, I believe, sir, if you talked to Biden about his response and he Trump's response was, I believe he's asleep. So be careful who you vote for. Russia expects oil price volatility to subside. Russia's Novak believes that oil prices have already incorporated the geopolitical premium for Middle East tensions. So I don't know if I agree with Novak on this. Oil prices have already factored in the geopolitical Middle East tensions and a recent price volatility set to ease in coming weeks. I'm just not sure I agree with that. There is so much going on in the Middle East that I don't even know what to do other than make sure that you've got food supplies and are stocked. China, oil demand is concern, concerns are not going away. China's economic woes and prosperity crisis have been weighing on global oil demand consumption and growth expectations this year. Despite some renewed optimism in the wake of the Fed's jumbo cut, concerns about China aren't going away. OPEC trimmed up its oil demand growth for 2024, citing concerns in China. Here's where I'm seeing this. And from the numbers that I'm following, China is still buying everything that they possibly can. China's fuel consumption has disappointed so far, but they're buying and putting into storage all the LNG that they could possibly can and all of the oil that they can. Countries that are going to war fill their tanks. I think that people are reading into this too much if they think that it's because of a slow economy. China is going to be filling everything that they possibly can. I'll go on record on that. Here's a quote out of the article. Chinese oil demand is currently firmly in contradiction, falling by 1.7 or 280,000 barrels per year on year on a marked contrast with a 9.6 average growth in 2023. Accordingly, we expect annual growth of 1.1. Gasoline is expected to peak this year or next year, not only because nobody's moving, but simply because the fleet is slowly changing toward electric vehicles. And part of this is because China's got half the cost associated with a battery that the West does. It's because they own the supply chain on that. So they might have a lower demand because of EVs, but they're still going to be buying everything that they can for the near term. Anyway, with that, I hope that you share, like, subscribe. Please go to our theenergynewsbeat.substack.com for our Substack. Please check out all of our podcasts. And also, if you're a uh, looking to invest in the oil and gas space, we have partnered with R.T. Trevino in his, and it's a personal investment. I think it is phenomenal. Reach out and we can hook you up and get you in touch with them. And just to see, say, hey, wait a minute. I'm curious about uh, where do I put my money in this crazy world where you do want to return? So with that, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.